A Press, NVIDIA, Wiley Cybex, and Balls. Mm -mm. And uh, right. oh yeah, please thank them by supporting them. Yeah. We uh, do have balls available in the uh, con suite the upstairs, suite. second floor. Very mm, balls. Um, first thing, I, I want to thank Jody, mm -hmm. uh, as I did in the program, for really helping not a con happen this year because she was the one that kicked me in the ass to make sure stuff got done. Um, I think this is hopefully going to be our, our best year yet. Uh, we had over 204 people pre-register for the event this year, which is three times what we had last year. So that's a good first step. Obviously, most of them aren't here yet, but uh, they will be, I'm sure. Um, unfortunately, we did have a number of, of uh, bad schedule changes. Uh, a couple people couldn't be with us. More importantly, most importantly, Daniel Wilson and Richard Forno. Uh, Daniel suffered a, a, a serious loss in his family and had to take care of, of his family this weekend. Uh, and likewise, Richard Forno has uh, a very serious medical issue that he's in the process of dealing with right now. So they send their deepest regrets for not being able to be here. And they're going to make every effort to be here next year to, uh, to have some fun with us and to share their knowledge um, and experiences. Uh, just as you probably know, we do have an updated schedule. I worked on these until about 1.30 last night and spent two hours in Kinko's this morning. Um, so hopefully we should have everybody as up to date as possible with our current schedule lineup, and we also have our, our addendums for our, our additional speakers. Um, also this year, for those interested, we have the, the 2006 scavenger hunt put together by the cat who uh, helped us judge. Well, actually, no, she didn't help us judge last year, but uh, she, she did a good job and, and really was pretty creative, so she threw, threw this list together. Um, one other thing that we're doing a little different this year uh, is doing a raffle, and I know it kind of sounds kind of weird, but what we tried to avoid was last year when we uh, gave a speaker a prize and told the speaker, you will give this prize away. And they were like, rah, 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 okay. So this year, hopefully, you might get prizes you actually want. Um, and we'll have a whole bunch of different ways where you can get tickets by filling out our survey, uh, by answering questions and talks. You know, speakers can give them out. Uh, in addition to other freebies they may have uh, given out, we'll give you some tickets for buying swag, and you, you get one for just walking in the door. Um, and the way it's going to work is there's a, a rather ghetto piece of uh, like a set of PVC pipes up in the con suite, which is also new this year, on the second floor, um, where you could just drop your ticket into a PVC pipe, and that allegedly is, corresponds to a prize. I don't think we have that finished yet, but we're no. working on it. Um, and that way, uh, we'll be doing prize drawings before NFF's t-shirts tonight, before the talent show tomorrow, and during closing ceremonies tomorrow, and we're just going to hopefully Sunday. give away everything on Sunday. <laughs> closing ceremonies. Pardon me, closing ceremonies better not be tomorrow. I'm in trouble. Um, uh, but to kind of talk about the con suite again, we kind of borrowed this idea from another uh, number of other uh, events, such as uh, PenguinCon and Freaknik, Freaknik and a whole bunch of other things. So basically what, what it was is I dropped uh, about six to $700 on food and pop and stuff upstairs for you guys to just go at and enjoy, um, including, you know, even though Balls donated three cases, I bought an additional five. So that's 200 bottles of Balls. Um, <laughs> my staff has already gone through most of one case. Um, <laughs> yeah, we're, we're trying to make up for the fact that there's not a lot of food in the area yeah. to at least supply some snacks to keep you guys alive. Yeah, uh, because I realize you know, how important it is. And likewise, we got a, a local coffee place, Phoenix Coffee, who makes some of the best coffee in Cleveland, gave us a five-pound bag of coffee. So we're going to hopefully be having coffee flowing all weekend for you guys for free. Um, Trying to give you good value for money. I thank you all for coming to Cleveland. I mean, it, it, it makes sense that on the first day of Nauticon, it looks like crap outside. I guarantee it won't get any better. So stay inside. Listen to some good talks. Um, we do have an event this evening that I want Jim to tell you about. We, uh, tomorrow, instead of having the not a rave, because that was kind of that was kind of weird. For, who, who was here last year? Yeah, who uh, saw the rave? <laughs> who is glad we're not doing that again this year? Keep the hands up. Right. <laughs> uh, yeah, that, that didn't work out too well, but we are still going to have some pretty big electronic music acts, including uh, the owner of the, the best local record shop here in Cleveland for electronic dance music, Doug Burkhart. And our, our big headliner is Keith Myers, who uh, I flew out from Seattle, who's going to be spinning for us. He spun at DEF CON. He spun at uh, okay. Shoe Con. He, he spins at all these cons. And he, he usually comes, I don't know what he's going to look like, but he comes with these like, foot and a half Liberty Spikes, really throws down the tracks, sounds great, and he's going to be doing something to touch tomorrow. Tonight. 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 I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're doing sort of a, an unofficial Nauticon after party tonight at this place uh, called the Touch Supper Club. Uh, I just put a whole bunch of flyers. They look like this. They're out on the registration desk. They tell you where it's at. It's basically uh, just across the river. 
Also, the Food Network was there last night, so you know the food here is pretty damn good. I heard you saw Rachel Ray. Rachel, I was eating dinner there last night, and Rachel Ray walked in, Woo! walked in to uh, to do some food filming there. So uh, this place, this place gone tonight, over on the west side, just across the river. Uh, we'll probably be getting started around about 10:30 or so. Uh, great music. Some local house people will be there. We'll get we're getting Keith Keith Myers to go out there and spin some records for a while as well. Um, kitchen's open until 1 a.m. So. Can't go wrong you want some late-night food after NFF t-shirts? I, I recommend the falafel and the Greek pizza. Um, well, I think the big question is, do you have to like dress up for this? or you're like? No, you can be a complete and total scrub. All right, show your badge. Yeah. <laughs> I also want to say for the 2600 members, you may have noticed this is the first Friday of the month. The Cleveland 2600 will be meeting in the hotel bar and in the pool room next to it. So if you want to participate in a multi-state 2600 meeting, that will also be going on tonight, yeah. probably around 7. Yeah, I know we have uh, members of MI2600 here. Uh, Minnesota's Min Minnesota be 2600, here. Cleveland 2600. Most of Ohio. Yeah, <laughs> almost all of Ohio. So hopefully we can check that out and, and have a good time. Um, I can't think of too much else. I hope you have fun. Does anybody have any questions just kind of right off the bat that they want to throw at me? Yes, sir. Uh, 146.760, 146.880, those are the two big ones. One of them's run by Lyra, the Lake Erie um, uh, Amateur Radio Association. Paul Timmons contacted yeah. Lyra, and they gave us authorization to use the repeater with no complaints for the yeah. weekend. So one four six, And they may be stopping by at some point. Yeah, so 146.76, is they already blessed us to use it. Good, good repeater. Great question. Next one, anybody else have a question or anything they want to ask? Comments? Who's, I'm uh, just curious, who's, who's here has never been to Nauticon before? Holy crap. <laughs> um, well, well, they're here early. I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll just say this much then. Um, this, we, we call it a hacker conference, but I, I fully admit it's, it's not really. Um, it's not like it's DEF CON. It's not Black Hat. It's not Cansac West, because if it was, you'd be in Vancouver right now. Um, it's a little bit different. What we do is we, we not only hack computers that talk and, te and technology, but we hack music, we hack art, we hack community, we hack relationships. We try to bring it all together, um, and that's how we try to differentiate ourselves from everybody else. Um, you'll see a lot of the same things, game shows, talks, and all that kind of stuff, but what we really encourage people to do is to kind of get out of their comfort zone, experience something new, learn something new, meet new people, meet people in subject areas that perhaps you aren't familiar with so you can uh, find out something new to, 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 to try. That's why we have Anything But Ethernet, which is our flagship contest, mm. which this year is going to have some really crazy entries. I mean, people will be transferring packets over, uh, what, uh, model train sets. Uh, last year we had semaphores, Lego printers, all kinds of cool stuff. Uh, Jason Scott's going to be doing his, his Not Account Radio show, so, you know, if you want to sit down and get on the air, I mean, sit down and talk to him for 15 minutes. Um, we'll have a whole bunch of real personalities here. Some people have been going to cons for you know, maybe this is their 25th con, 30th con. I mean, Echo, if you ever see him come around later, you'll know who he is. He loves talking about the military. He'll be here. Um, so there, there's, there's a lot of characters here, and this is hopefully a place where you can find your own character. Uh, we, we try to be really respectful. Um, we'll, we'll be around, so if you ever need any, have any problems or have a question, ask us. And likewise, if you see somebody doing something not so cool, just let us know, and we'll, we'll try to take care of it. But we try to run a real clean show here, a real good show. Um, but we want you to have fun, too. We're going to have a bar cart in here both nights, Friday and Saturday. So if you don't want to go all the way to the bar, we'll have a cash bar right there you can get loaded up at. Uh, try not to get my staff too loaded because I might need them. Uh, other than that, have a really Feel good Feel free to buy drinks for the people in yellow shirts if they're off duty. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, other than that, have fun. And if you have any complaints or comments, please let us know right away. We'll fix them. Thanks a lot for coming. Have a good time. Shut the camera a bit more in. Are we ready? Yeah. Sound loud. <laughs> hmm? All right.
So I'm Benign Punk. This is McFly. I'm from the USA, and he's from Germany. We're going to be talking about the difference between the American and the German-speaking or European hacker scenes. Um, so I'm going to give you, um, for the one person in this room who doesn't know what 2600 is, <laughs> uh, it's basically the closest thing that we have to a hacker organization in America. And uh, as most of you know, it's a magazine that has meetings that meet first Friday in towns all over the US, uh, Canada, the rest of the world. Um, and that's pretty much it. So people who meet at these meetings also have their own things sometimes. They sometimes have their own special names. Sometimes they throw their own cons or do other things. Um, the other biggest hacker organizations that happen in the US is, as you know, this con thing. And I could probably name 10 to 15 a year that happen. And these are all hosted by individual people. They're individual places. And there's not a lot of connection between the different scenes. So that's, I mean, I'm sure you guys all know that. It's basically the hacker scene here in America. So he's going to tell you about how CCC works. And we're going to start talking about how it's different. OK. Well, the first thing uh, what is completely different uh, from the CCC to 2600 is that we are top-bottom organization, we call it this way. So we have a main official organization. Um, for It was for Germany, but it grew a bit. And now it's mostly the German-speaking countries and a bit the Netherlands. Um, under this German main CCC, we call it Verein. You don't have anything like that in the American law system. It's an own law person. Under this, you have the local CCC parts, who sometimes call themselves different, but all of them are the CCC parts. Um, if you want, this is for all the cities. We have, at the moment, 12 so-called Erfahrkreise, which are the bigger meetings who are regularly at least once a week. Um, they usually have a room. They usually have real members. So you go there and sign up and sometimes pay money, monthly, weekly, whatever they have. And then we have the so-called Kaustreff, which are the smaller meetings. You just, If you want to do some, you just uh, write an email to a mailing list and say, hey, hello, I'm uh, whatsoever in what's a small city, and I want to set up a car strap, and then you have a car strap. We have, at the moment, about 40 car straps. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's important to say at this point that the rooms that they have are not just some room in a building or a university that they meet in once a month. They have an actual physical rented space that is open to them 24 hours a day. That they can go to at any time. And uh, that's what their member dues go to pay for, and it also goes to pay for things like congresses and um, projects that they do. Yeah. Um, for the things uh, we do, we also have a magazine. We also have some radios. I think at the moment, four or five. We are planning on a TV show. We are having some cons and all the stuff you also have. Basically, they're much more organized. <laughs> 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 well, they're German. <laughs> so, um, so now that you have the basic idea, we want to just tell you how we individually fit into those scenes. Uh, I've been involved in the hacker scene for about five or six years now. I started uh, by one of the founding members of a 2600 meeting in Colorado, 720, um, that graduated after a few years and moved to Brooklyn. I've been helping out um, on various conferences, um, both here in the US and in Germany. Um, I live at the Hacker Halfway House. Um, what else do I do? <laughs> um, I used to be part of a private radio organization. I give talks at various congresses, and um, that's pretty much that's pretty much me. That's pretty much how I fit into 2600 and the American hacker scene. Well, I'm uh, with the CCC for about 10 years. I think I joined in 1996. Um, I've been the first congress in 1997, uh, which is an uh, annual thing between Christmas and New Year's Eve. Um, I'm doing radio shows since a hacker radio show since four years have been organizing um, a local con, have been organizing with a, a hack train. What else? Have hack train is a train that they rent to go to the Congress, and they have a whole train, just hackers. Pretty cool. Network. Network Amber, everywhere. Network, PDP-11, <laughs> electricity on every place, and sometimes wireless network uplink. 
Yeah. Okay, so now we're going to start comparing and contrasting what we have to what they have. Uh, we're going to start by talking about how the groups came together initially. So, uh, actually, I don't know a whole lot about this for the American hacker culture. I think 2600 Magazine started in 1984, and the meeting started sometime shortly afterwards. Um, the magazine, of course, is run by one person, Emanuel Goldstein, out of New York. And uh, his idea is that, I mean, any meeting that happens between hackers in a public space on Friday, the first Friday of every month at 5 p.m. is a 2600 meeting. And pretty much anything else that happens in the hacker community outside of that is not considered 2600, according to Emmanuel. <coughs> so this is basically the, the beginnings, uh, the, the baseline of our hacker culture, and everything else is built up from that. Of course, there were some cons before then, and the cons have always been sort of separate but equal from the 2600 scene. They borrow from each other a whole lot. Um, so that's what we mean by top to bottom and bottom to top. We started with this very loose, um, basic ideal, and everything that we have in our culture is built up from that. And this is sort of the opposite is what happened in the CCC. Yeah. The CCC was founded after an article in a left-wing paper in Germany. Most of the people, when it was founded, were from Hamburg. At that time, Germany was divided. And for they decided to meet up in the so-called Redaktion of the, I need to excuse for my English, uh, for the uh, Tagesspiegel, maybe who of you have been in Germany, this is really, uh, well, the main left-wing publishing. Um, so the first meeting was in, the first meeting was in Berlin. The first city where they really had a small kind of organization was in Hamburg. After that, the German uh, CCC was founded. Um, it began with a, a after that, after Berlin and founded, so we had then two. Then they started the magazine. Um, I think somewhere in 1909 something they started the radio called Chaos Radio in Berlin, the most famous one, which is on a commercial broadcast main station in Berlin. So not like all the other hacker radios on a more smaller radio station, but on the big, nearly the biggest station in Berlin. And yeah, then all the people came in, wrote mail to Karls to the CCC and said, well, I'm in Stuttgart, I'm in Karlsruhe, I'm in Bielefeld, which is a city that does not exist. Um, I'm whatever. And they started up building Karls Traff there, writing to the main organization saying, I want to do this. And well, you show up on the Congress of then, and after a time you get on someone promoted to Erfahrkreis, where when you're Erfahrkreis, you can officially say, we are the CCC which is a big thing in Germany to, just to say that. Well, and so it grew up to, I think, somewhere about 4,000 members at the moment, real members. The scene itself is much bigger because very many people say, well, I really like the CCC and I like the things they do, but I don't want to be really member at the moment because the two dollars or two euros a month is just too much money for me. <laughs> it's really the main reason. <laughs> I spent about six weeks, um, well, about two weeks to, or two months total in Germany last year, and uh, I've, I met so many people involved with the hacker scene out there. I, th I would say that they were more involved than the average people that you meet here, and maybe 15% of them were actually members. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, they have state health care and state college, so uh, in, in my experience, most of them are students, but very many students and in Germany it's a good thing to say I'm in the CCC so uh, you usually get good jobs. So at our university, uh, the main administration students are all from our local Castro. We'll talk about that in a second though. Do you want to talk briefly about the other hacker organizations in yes. Europe? In Europe? <coughs> in Europe. THC, the Netherlands. Yes, um, many, uh, I would start with the Netherlands. Those are the people who, uh, for historical reasons, as we invaded them, couldn't call themselves the CCC. <laughs> um, most of them call themselves Hippie from Hell. Um, they're mainly a pot smoking group of people throwing big cons once a year and big camping events every four years doing really good work. And still significantly more organized than us. 
Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and they are they use the same infrastructure as the CCC for on many things. So uh, we are very close together. Those people helped out with our network where we build up at our cons and we do a lot of the work at What the Heck, which is a con in the Netherlands for the meet, <laughs> big meeting. And it's a camping thing. And well, THC. so it's really close. Finale. Hmm? THC, finale. THC, finale. We have three groups in Germany who mostly overlap in persons with the CCC, but they do the well, what call, some people call hardcore stuff. You maybe heard of THC. You have maybe used some tools from them, like Hydra, the scanner, and Arma, um, the... THC is the hacker's choice, just in case there's any confusion out there. Yes. <laughs> oh, and in case we didn't say it, CCC, Chaos Computer Club. Yeah. Um, any other acronyms we haven't uh, explained? We'll try to explain that. All right, okay. They are those guys who write many tools, write security exploits. Then we have Fino Elite, who don't write that much tools, but are exploiting much more. Um, they blow up BlackBerry between the years. Maybe you've heard of that. Last year, they blow up the SAP data warehouse system, where you usually have a website where you can log into an application server and log into Not the Not really blowing server. up, but. <laughs> OK, okay. so. How we came together initially, all of the different scenes are different. Then we have are different. Oh, sorry. Team Teso, which is a t bit uh, not so active at the moment, but they're also one of those guys who just write the tools. So there's like a symbiosis over there. The people who are so hardcore that they want to be part of things like THC and Fino Elite don't really have a problem with organizations like the CCC, although they sort of are separate but equal, sort of in the same way that our Con circuit is different than 2600. There are usually no people from THT or Phenolite or Team Tisa who don't come to the conferences from the CCC because they don't like the CCC. So they do come. <laughs> um, as we've been talking about it, um, one of the other major differences that we've noted between the American hacker scene and the European hacker scene is our events. Our cons, they call some of their congresses, uh, conferences, the big one, whatever the you want to call it. So, um, I think uh, in the American scene, we have significantly more uh, events than they do, and um, we have to travel farther for them. <laughs> we have a, actually, we have a state in the United States that's as big as Germany, so um, <laughs> we have to do a lot more traveling. Um, the cons, I think, here are not just CCC events or um, one of the other group's events. They're organizations that come from different people individually in different places. So as you know, people like Jeff Moss run DEF CON. People like Froggy here run Nauticon. People like Emmanuel Goldstein run HOPE. And these people are not totally connected with one another. They're not part of the same organization. So this is a good thing in the sense that the cons that we do have all have their really unique characters and they're really sort of different from one another. And um, I think that's it's a good thing. Yeah. Mm, mainly the people organizing the cons in Germany all belong to the same group, CCC. And you are all, on nearly every con, you have the CCC Stuttgart, CCC Rhein Main, or whatsoever in the name of the con. We so have about five to six who are every, there every year. The biggest one is the Congress, which is about 2,500 to 3,000 people. 16 gigabit of internet, phone system, yeah. radio system, what else? Lots of stuff. Everything. <laughs> um, but I, we, we can boast that uh, our conferences are sometimes much larger than yours. I think we could say that fairly that DEF CON is twice the size of the annual big congress in Berlin. Um, we, they do have small events like this event, and uh, but I think we have more larger events, and we can talk about why that might be later. Well, we can live with <laughs> it really good because our country is not even half the size of America. So if you have double the size of people in your country, it's okay for us. <coughs> so, <laughs> um, if you were to pick the 
single biggest difference, I think, between the American hacker scene and the European hacker scene. It really boils down to this one thing. And this one thing is public image. Um, when you go to Germany and you hang out with people in the CCC and you read about their projects, you realize that they are much more loved by the public. <laughs> they are loved by the public. They are, they are in constant communication with their government. They have good jobs. They um, don't have to be ashamed of telling their grandmother that they're in the CCC. They don't have to have any really big uh, discussions about it because it's in the media, it's in the public. Um, and this is basically the opposite of what we have here. So I think that if you ask somebody at, you know, in the media what a hacker is, he's probably going to say a criminal of some kind or another people who steal your credit card, or people who break into phone systems, or people who do whatever. So I think that this attitude is really, really, really key to the reason that our cultures are different. Um, I think that it changes the demographic of the people who are in the scene, because people who are there are um, it's a good thing for them to be in the scene. It's a good thing for them to get a job. And they put on their resume, I'm a proud member of the CCC. Um, this is something that we have to skirt around, I think, most of us, depending on your job. <laughs> so um, it changes the demographic. It changes um, the way that we're able to organize and the, the kind of events that we're allowed to throw. And as you know, Many of these cons have had to move from place to place, right? Because they're unwelcome at certain places after a while. Some of you might remember Rubicon, <laughs> no longer. <laughs> uh, for example, um, I think yeah. I already talked about CCP for you. <laughs> you want to say anything more? About it? <laughs> Don't worry to that. Projects. Projects. Well, for, for example, in this public image thing, why don't you tell us about Hackabike? Hackabike. Yeah, Hackabike was, uh, we have these bicycles in the city in Germany who are run by the German Rail. Um, you can enter, you can call a, num a number with your mobile phone written on the bike. You get a pin code saying them the number of the bike. You get a pin code for the bike and you can drive away with the bike and just leave it somewhere else. So, as there's electronics in there, we thought that might could be interesting, so we got one, <laughs> opened it, uh, it was an Amtel board in there which got a serial port, so we were able to change the firmware and we implemented a code 2342 running at all the time, so you just need to get up to a bike, modify it and enter 2342. We changed with that about one third of the uh, bikes available in Germany. <laughs> um, we just rented a white transporter, got a big printer, printed German rail, called a bike technical service on, got to the fan shop of the German rail, bought those nice blue things, printed those cards you have with your picture and where you work, <laughs> touch them there, go to the railway station and open all of them there. <laughs> and the security came up and asked, what were I doing? And we said, well, we're technical service and we had the job to come here. And they said, okay, well, it well, looks good. <laughs> Go. <laughs> this went for about one and a half year. <laughs> <laughs> After that, it was not so easy to still keep it undercover. So it went up to the media. We decided to publish, publish it in the Datenschleuder, which is our magazine. Um, surely... Um, the chief, the, the boss of the John Rail said on the media on the evening as he was asked about that, yeah, we'll go to the police with them. So we cleaned up our room, moved all our garbage into old computer cases, wrote some things like, very important, call a bike data on them and let them all get picked up by the police. <laughs> <laughs> there was nothing coming after that. We don't <laughs> got in trouble for that. Um, so this is, this is a very funny example, but um, why don't you tell them about what happened with the German rail afterwards? Mm -hmm. uh, there was a lawsuit, right? Mm -hmm. so okay, here's just how I heard things. <laughs> um, because of all of this hack -a bike nonsense, the German rail waited for a significant amount of time after all of this came to the media to place a lawsuit against the CCC for this 
And the reason is because they were afraid that public opinion would come down on the side of the hackers. And can you just imagine that for a second? I'm the German rail system. <laughs> I don't want to sue hackers because I think the public won't like me anymore. <laughs> and that's cool, right? <laughs> <laughs> so this is this is the kind of difference of public opinion. Yeah, that happened. Changes. I did, that happened and uh, got cut down really quickly by the state. So uh, <laughs> we don't have any big problems with uh, the police and things being public. So after we publish something in the Datenschleuder, usually the police steps by and <laughs> says hello. And <laughs> there are reasons for that. We might explain that later. Okay, so public image is a really huge thing. Uh, another example, maybe some of you have heard about blinking lights. Blinking lights. Blinking lights, yeah. <laughs> so for those of you who don't know, there was a building in Berlin um, which had very square windows, and the CCC installed lights behind each of the windows and used the entire building in the middle of a very prominent square in Berlin as a monitor. And <laughs> you could write programs or use this fancy GUI that they made to send your messages across the building. This was the event of the millennium. This was the 2000 Berlin millennium event. In about the next <laughs> talk, uh, the <laughs> official Berlin party of the two year 2000 was in front of this display on the so-called Alexanderplatz, which is a very famous place in Germany. Uh, the countdown for 2000 was on that building and there are really many funny things, like you could play Pong on the building. Right, with your cell phone. You could dial a number and then use your keys to play Pong on the building. This, this <laughs> I have a few points about this. The first is that the city of Berlin wanted to use it for their display. They paid them to do this. Um, <laughs> I went to Berlin for the very first time for a 21C3. I went into a hotel where I was staying across the street from this building talked to some random people from Britain because there was some mix-up with the room and they said, what are you doing here? And I said, I'm here for the CCC Congress. And they said, oh, the thing with blinking lights and the pong in the building. Like, they're known, right? <laughs> like, this organization is in the media. It's in the public. It's, it's constantly something that doesn't have to be uh, you know, skirted around or said differently in the media or whatever, and it's loved by the public. Um, Blink Lights had another project after that. They moved on to France. We were called uh, by some people who had been in an art week in France, and we set up the Blink Lights project after that in the National Library of France, which you can imagine is not so easy to get. We are working very hard on bringing a similar kind of project to New York City. So if anybody's interested in helping out on a project like that, if you have funding or friends who have buildings in New York or anything like that, just, just talk to me afterwards. <laughs> OK, so just we're going to briefly go over the rest of these differences that we think we have. Right, yeah. Um, why don't you just talk about that? Yeah. Obviously, well, we don't have any connections to our politicians, right? Like, we may write letters to our senators and whatnot, but we don't have regular meetings with them. In fact, I think if one of us went to lunch with a senator and it got to the media, it would probably be a bad thing for the senator, right? So, this is in contrast. Yeah. Uh, if you Google CCC and lobby, you'll find up the, uh, the CCC as an official lobbying group for the German parliament. So if there's any kind of law changement and new laws uh, recording the electronic stuff we play around with, we, we get informed. We don't have to inform ourselves. Um, and for example, we had den, the Mr. Taus, which is the speaker of the German government for new in electronic media as keynote speaker for the last conference on the 22C3. And those people don't have a problem showing up then with us and shaking hands on the conference and taking pictures. A member of the CCC is an ICANN director. Has been. Has been. Yeah, that was easy. <laughs> In Europe, we elected our ICANN uh, directors by ourselves. And the only thing you need to, ver to uh, vote was an email address. <laughs> so that's easy. A movie was made in Germany about hackers. And it was screened at the CCC conference 
because they wanted the CCC's approval of the movie before it went to the public. Which are the media thing they want to have just Could you imagine if they did that with us, with hackers? Like, <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> they did that for the movie. They did well, OK, not, not all of us. <laughs> a, a few of our media icons, maybe. <laughs> Um, uh, or, or swordfish. Did anybody talk to you about swordfish? Right? <laughs> okay. Um, one of the next big things is how we bring in our next generation of hackers and how they bring in their next generation of hackers. This is different. Um, for us, I don't really know how it works. Like, I think for girls, they just date people and that's how they get in. That's how I got in. But <laughs> uh, for the rest of you, I don't know, maybe you can tell me. Maybe this is a little part of audience participation. I think it's mostly the magazine. And am I wrong? Does anybody have a... You're wrong. Okay, tell me your story. Uh, personally, I think 2600 is a rag. Well, of course, but how did you get in? <laughs> how did you become part of the hacker culture that brings you here today? All right. Well, for people who are not as old as you. <laughs> yeah? I, I got started when I saw that my school stored its like, uh, typing program when we were learning like fingering. And like okay, yeah, that's cool. But how did you meet other hackers for the first time? Not how did you get into hacking. But I changed the typing program, so we had to type up scene phrases. And another kid that was already part of the song came up there we go. All right. So we have word of mouth, right? We have meeting friends and, and things that you're doing with hacking. And we have the magazine. Do you have anything else? How you come into the hacker culture? <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. I wonder if those classified ads in 2600 have gotten any letters. Anybody else? No? IRC. Oh, God. Okay, anyway, so how do you bring in your next generation? Well, we have all the magazine, we have the usual contact you have. Uh, many people come to the first time to the Congress, read it on a computer magazine, but the main thing, what we changed is that we have a project called U23, where we want to get all the people under the age of 23. And then they have to do some things. For the last thing was, you might see it at the hope, was the FNOT light which is a small thing to assemble, which can produce every RGB color uh, for, some, uh, for example, to enlight a room. So they it's, it's three them. circuit boards, 27 LEDs, serial interface. And so they would bring in these kids that they would meet and advertise in universities and schools, have them do this contest to build these things, and the ones who were really into it would become the next generation. The project started in Cologne, and they really <coughs> go to the schools and help the computer science teachers to be lazy by let them talk and let them do the stuff. They have something for you and I just can sit in the corner and read my things and do something else. Um, and this, I think, it's not uh, U23 is uh, in the third round or in the fourth round at the moment. We have some programming events. We have some robot build-up experiments before, so it's a different thing every time. And uh, mainly the thing is to get those people in and to get the people something to do. Not to sit around and ask every random people showing up, can you show me how to become a hacker? Um, <laughs> we in this case prefer them to do something and when they build up the node light by themselves and discover they got a serial interface or USB interface, whatever you build it, and they can program it and do those stuff, well, this is usually the easier thing to get them in contact with the semen to get, become a hacker at least a bit. Okay, so... It, it's not, it is not making you a hacker. I don't say uh, you will build the snort light and you're a hacker after that, but it's helping the people to get into the scene and to get in contact and to feel a bit of what, their people, what those people think. All right, so to segue into our conclusions, the last difference that we want to talk about is, uh, well, it seems like we're having a big happy Germany fest up here, right? Like, wow, Germany's so cool. Like, they're so much better than us at everything. Like, like uh, their projects and their people, and they talk to the media, and they have all this radio show. 
and everything. This is much better. <laughs> they definitely have better beer that's not contest. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, <coughs> that's not exactly the case, and uh, and here's why. Um, I think that here in America we have significantly different uh, physical, political climate to deal with than they have in Germany. Um, we have many more challenges to face as if, if we want to be hackers, if we want to be part of the hacker community, than they do. For them, they listen to the radio, or they go to some project, or they do whatever, and, and it's all sunshine, sunshine and roses, right? Like, they get to be part of this cool thing, they get to do this cool stuff, and when they're done, they get to get this cool job and have all this like fancy cred, right? <laughs> For us, I mean, the last time I visited my family, and this is me, okay, I'm a girl, I just, I just talk, right? I don't, I don't know how to make a Fenord light, right? I was called a criminal by my entire family three minutes after entering their home the last time I saw them because I share music, okay? <laughs> this is a political climate that we have. I share legal music with my friends. Backups, okay? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the things that we have to face to, to be in the scene and to do stuff for it is, is much greater. Uh, to go to these cons, we have to travel to places like Cleveland. Like <laughs> <laughs> Brooklyn is awesome, represent. <laughs> um, um, the political climate is very bad. When we do things, we have very serious political con consequences. We get raided. Some of us go to jail. Like fired. fired. Yes, we stop having family and friends. Like there's all kinds of consequences for us who do this. So <clears throat> I think that the people who are here, and the people who are still coming to these events, and the people who are doing their things in their communities, are are the heroes because we have a whole lot to face and uh, and uh, you guys are doing it anyway so um, we are doing cool things in America we really are like uh, <laughs> the, the compositions that we have the cons that we throw and the projects that the groups that we have do I don't know if any of you saw the uh, the Wi-Fi gun by the Schmoo group at DEF CON last year um, I don't know if any of you saw the Anything But Ethernet contest here last year with the Lego printer and the, and the guy with the flags, right? Like, we have cool projects here, and people are doing things here, and we don't have the infrastructure that they do, but, but this allows us some other things. Yeah. Well, maybe ours is in that point of view, a bit different because, as already said, we have rooms where you can gather in Berlin, for example. We have, I think some of them, you have been at the CCCB. Um, this is a room nearly open 24 7 with computers of, well, at least some thousand, most of them old used computers standing around there, people you can meet. And uh, it's a trustful atmosphere. You can just drop your laptop there, come back two days later, he will be there. And it's just as we get more the good people instead of uh, nobody would think of the CCC as the criminals, besides maybe the boss of the German rail now. But uh, <laughs> this gives just this are the, then you have different pe uh, persons, then you have so many possibilities if you have a place to meet every day, and there are people who really come there every day after work every day after university, every day after school, where they can meet, they can change ideas. Every day instead of school, like uh, me, yeah, some. when I was there. <laughs> anyway. And it's totally different. It, you don't have a problem, as already said. Um, I write all the things I did with the CCC in my resume if I apply for a job. And this is the reason to get a job. Now, a university. Um, usually you have some students running the, the minor computers and that stuff. I think it's the same over here. You have sent some students over here. And uh, in our uh, computer science department of the Technical University of Darmstadt, when they need a new administrator, we'll get informed two weeks in advantage. 
And if we have some people who want to have a job, uh, usually this never gets printed up somewhere. So it's the university realized that most of the people in there just did good jobs and, well, they prefer to hire us than to fight us. There's really a big, big difference in the scene. I was walking around and you just, she told me not to tell anybody outside the scene that I'll see myself as a hacker and that stuff because this is not really always... Well, not the taxi driver. <laughs> <laughs> she was asking me. <laughs> 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 okay. So we're going to draw some conclusions here. Oh, question. Oh, I was just going to say, um, my, what I know of Germany is that there's more of a, a cultural inclination to join clubs. You know, you have like uh, soccer clubs or sports clubs or different sorts of clubs outside of uh, a school setting. Yes. Like in this in this in this country, we pretty much only join organizations uh, as ex as an extracurricular activity. What about your Kiwanis club? What about right? <laughs> 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 so uh, 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 that um, that uh, I, I get the impression just uh, in terms of cultural differences that in this country we are. Once we're out of school, we're less of, we're not really like joiners. More like, independent. Like, exactly, very independent, um, and you could say isolated or, or also insular, you know? And that combined with this kind of cultural paranoia where uh, a lot of people feel that any kind of technical knowledge is a potential threat to national security, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> and like, that, that attitude is actually picked up a lot recently. Sure. You know, so that if you have any knowledge of the interior workings of even a bag strike reader, you know, like you know, the, 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 the girl at the uh, grocery store is going to be, you know. Freaked out. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, this is just yet another so, one of the differences yeah. so, that we have. Now, that's, um, that's all well good. It's like it would be great if we could go in the direction of having a, an actual political entity, you know, that was uh, 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 recognized as a... Uh, uh, whatever, if you watch C-SPAN, you know, and you see the, uh, the, the, the people from the EFF or the, uh, uh, what's the other one, the, uh, the privacy group in DC? I can't remember the actors, you know? They don't, um, you know, they're basically like uh, uh, lobbying organizations, mm -hmm. you know? And sure. Oh, well, Prometheus Radio is a lobby organization also. In terms of, like, hacker, like, the EFF is more of a protection front. Oh, I'm not against the EFF. Sure. I'm it's like uh, the EFF is like our version of the CCC, basically in terms of a political entity, but they don't really do anything for more of a it, the, you, you, you hit on one thing there. Uh, the way that the CCC is set up and recognized by the government there is, is something that we don't have. Like, they're named an official club with the government. Yes, we have the, the so-called Verein, which is a law, for, law person. So if you just set up a Verein club, you don't have to sign anything by yourself. And if everything if something goes wrong, the is it, is it, is it dissimilar from a, a not-for-profit corporation? It is dissimilar. It yes. is dissimilar. The can kind of... Can profit. Can make profit. Well, yes. but that's not we the do. biggest difference. Yeah, but one. Yeah, sure. Uh, the biggest difference is that, I mean, being a national group, you get certain benefits from that, right? Like, you get audience with parliament members, right? Well, not everybody. You have well, not to everybody, uh, but it um, be there for a while. Elected after member you get of your group, right? And if you're a soccer club of <coughs> Stuttgart, you won't get an audience with the German parliament. Okay, but uh, th it is a political entity that they have that we don't have. Uh, the closest thing that we have is a nonprofit, but it's still not the same. Well, I, I, I just mean that it's not, it's not that uncommon of a thing for a club of people who are not in a school together or not working together in Germany, for a club to have a common space and a common, common projects or have like, you know, uh, a room like that. Sure. Whereas here, that's what sure. Heard. Well, th I mean, this, this is you know? just, yeah, it's just one of many reasons, right? Like, the fact that we aren't a country of joiners isn't the only reason that we don't have a hacker culture. I mean, we have a hacker culture. Here we are. We're all independent. Well, could and it be that we're broken down into individual states? 
Well, I think we have states. location has yeah. something. Not so many, but we have states. I mean, if you drive eight hours in Germany, you're on the other side, right? Like, so, <laughs> and driving eight hours from New York to here is like, oh, that's nothing. So half, half of that is that's the size, something. Half of this is speed on the motorways. If if you really want to get into it, you can come up with, you know, lots and lots and lots of differences that make our culture different from their culture. But one of the things that we want to conclude from all of this, from drawing all of these comparisons today, is um, <coughs> what we can learn from each other. So we're going to talk about our biggest weaknesses and our biggest strengths, and your biggest weaknesses and your biggest strengths, yes. and your different culture. So, question. Just a quick one for you. Um, uh, how is the EU affecting the US uh, We had some people from Austria and Switzerland in the CCC all the time. I don't think it's affecting the CCC at all. What if it, they try to move over like the software patent laws from Ireland over into other areas of the EU? Uh, they try to. We fought, we fought that successful. So there they didn't come through. There is certain friction already occurring. Uh, yes, but uh, the European law got united in that case for software patents, and they wanted to set up a law again that makes enables software patents in the European Union, and we have been successfully fighting it. We don't have it. The discussion is over. We won't get software patents. Oh, we're not done. We're not done. We have a couple more things to say, and then we have a couple announcements. So how much time do we have left? About 20 minutes. About 20 minutes. All right. So... Uh, I'm going to go quickly. We're going to do weaknesses, and then we're going to do strengths. Um, so the US, what are our weaknesses? I'm going to tell you mine, and then you can tell me yours. Um, I think that, in general, we don't have enough discussion between different you know, enclaves of hacker culture. Um, we mostly talk when we get together at cons, right? But otherwise, we're limited to the people in our, our area. Um, Related to this, we don't have a central ideal or central infrastructure that gets them all of these different kinds of benefits, like money to have spaces and money to do projects. And, and by doing projects, they get a better public image, which lets them do more projects and have better spaces, etc. cetera. Um, the projects that many of us think about and start here don't end up happening. And I think that some of the number one reasons that they don't happen is we don't have money for them. We don't have time for them. We don't have the people for it. Or we don't have the space for it. <coughs> um, you can only, you know, hack bikes with pin codes in your garage for so long before your mom gets mad or your wife gets mad. Or you couldn't probably do it for a year and a half. And if you could, you probably couldn't do it again for another year and a half ten years later. Right? Um, we have a bad public image. At the end of the day, I think this is our biggest weakness. And uh, whatever we can do to work on our public image, uh, one of the things they do is they have, at their space, they have an open day every week. Sometimes they have people speak that the public can come in and listen to, or they have an event for the public, right? So whatever we can do to involve the public and make sure that they're not afraid of us and see the good things that we do, um, I think the more we're going to be able to fix all of these other weaknesses that we have. Do you remember? <laughs> yes. Yes. Well, John said you had uh, not enough discussion. We have the opposite problem. We have lots of lots of lots of too much discussion. Um, usually in the CCC, if you bring something up, uh, it starts a discussion about a month. Thousands of emails were written sometimes. And this gets to the point that, well, one p part of the discussion is that really many people, I'd say less than, uh, more than 30%, are really unwilling to break even minor rules. Rules is a big thing in Germany. Uh, <laughs> if you can follow the rules, you can get nearly everything. It's no problem if you follow the rules to get a radio. You have to work through that amount of paper. <laughs> But after that, you will get a license to transmit on the FM band for six days with, let's say, 50 watts, which ends up in an area of about 30 to 40 kilometers. And we have really. You can really swear, too, right? Sorry? You can swear. 
Yeah, but they can't incite riot or talk about fascism. <laughs> you know. <laughs> we can talk about those this four letter words, but we can't talk about it. There's some th certain things who happened in Germany about 60 years ago uh, <laughs> where you better do not talk about on the radio. Just. <laughs> <laughs> but this is in stark contrast to the Pi radio that we had 24-7 in Boulder, Colorado at 150 watts, which had a range of about 40 miles at night. So because we were willing to break the rules, we got this benefit for it. No paper. Most of the people just don't like to break the rules and prefer to hack the system right down. Lots of, lots of, lots of, lots of paper. This gets to the point that very many projects in Germany just don't happen because of lots of discussions. We had some projects for the year 2000, and after the discussion was over, we had 2002. <laughs> 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 so... Question? Quick contrast question. Sure. Would you say that in the US we start lots of projects, we don't finish them, and in Germany, you we're getting to that, things. absolutely. I think that a lot of things, I mean, we at home in the Hacker Halfway House wanted to make a drink mixing machine so that we didn't have to mix our own drinks anymore. So you just go up to it and you say, I want to write Weiss Russian. I want it with soy milk, whatever, right? So um, <laughs> we thought about this a lot and we drew up schematics and we ended up buying some valves to play with and we had all this stuff, right? And then, you know, people moved out and it's two years later and it doesn't happen, right? <laughs> But we played with it, and we tried, and we had all this discussion. I think that this is in contrast to some of the projects in Germany where if it's not perfect, or there's we'll not agreement, it just doesn't get started. Right? Yeah, you have to have about 30, 50 to 100 people who belong to the size of the project <laughs> to say, uh, well, this is a good project, this is the way we do it is good, so we, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you have enough people that you still get projects done. Yeah. Well, over here in America, the people just get up and do something, and in Germany, we just found a, form a circle and discover. To this uh, too much discussion end, um, as some of you might know, I worked on design for Hope 5, the fifth Hope, and I also worked on design for 22C3 in uh, Germany. Um, <coughs> working on design, and I had a great experience with them, not, not to say anything, but an example of too much discussion is we spent three weeks discussing the font of the small letters in the logo. We spent three days on the website. And this is, <laughs> this is, this shows, right? So <laughs> if you want to look into things, and this is because the logo went to the main mailing list, as, as far as I know, right? And it was open for hundreds of people to discuss. <laughs> so by the time we made the website, which wasn't done until I think two, three weeks before the actual event, um, <laughs> I mean, we had something there, but we didn't have all of the information, right? So you can see how this too much discussion can, you can end up tripping over yourself and not getting your stuff done in that respect. If you want to get something done, the main thing in Germany is to keep out the discussion. Which is really not easy, because if somebody will notice, you have the discussion. For the artists out there, design is not a democratic process. Hitler was a designer. Uh, did I mean by this? No, hold on. Uh, so here? No, he was a designer. Okay. <laughs> I'm serious. I'm serious. He failed as an artist, and almost everyone who fails as an artist becomes a designer. <laughs> so. I'm the subcoaches. Hmm? Are you I'm a scene whore. Okay. <laughs> I gave a talk about that at 21C3 if anyone's interested. Uh, okay, a couple more. Do you need to with uh, Intimidated? Yeah, or this one. I'll, pull, well. um, I'll get this one first. Okay. When people come to the CCC, you usually have, when they introduce themselves, they say, well, I'm 18 years old, speak at least two or three programming languages and all those stuff. and." I haven't showed up at the CCC because I thought I wasn't good enough. What is the problem? Because there are really many creative people we would like to have who just don't show up because um, as we have a so good public view, very many people say, well, I think I'm not good enough to join them. And this keeps really many people out, but this is a problem. 
I think you have more the opposite problem here. Teach me how to hack. <laughs> okay. So cultures. Um, I think uh, one of the strengths that we have here in the U.S. Just to segue, is that um, I think a lot of the projects that we end up doing and um, a lot of the the kind of events that we have. It, this is a perfect example here at Nauticon. Um, I think most of us would agree that the hacker culture is a subculture, right? And our subcultures tend to overlap a lot with other subcultures, right? So here we're going to have Nauticon and we're going to have a rave, right? Like <coughs> in Colorado, we had hackers and goths and they hung out, right? Like <laughs> I think um, in the hacker cultures, especially in maybe smaller places in like New York, you have a lot of overlap in different subcultures. So some of the projects that you end up doing are video projects or music projects or art projects, design projects, because you have all of these other people in your line of vision, right? Because we are, our subcultures overlap. And this is in contrast yes. to Germany. The overlap of two other subcultures is really only really rare. We have some they overlap clothes. hackers and lock pickers. And that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Which I think we would just say what the <laughs> it's the same. <laughs> like <laughs> um, Most. you don't meet uh, the CCC people from CCC because you meet them in other subcultures. This is really much more divided in Germany. You're in the CCC subculture or in the hacker subculture, and that's it. You don't have anything like some people hanging around with the goth. What we have in Germany, as you probably heard, um, but. It's, it's not that we have uh, some overlapping subcultures, except those where we are really close to them. For example, the lock pickers. And this is slightly them. different in Berlin, but mostly. Yes. In Berlin, they have overlap a uh, bit with the art scene, and they have other overlaps. A very cool, cool thing called CBase, which if you don't know about, actually. The CBase itself is not a CCC project, but it's from people who, <coughs> what was the sense, if you can't create art and beauty with a computer? Whatever. You just wanted <laughs> to say that this is not They're true. building a space station, OK? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> End of discussion. <laughs> OK, so this we're going to go through the strength real quick, and then we're going to wrap up and have some announcements. So. Yeah, cool. Okay, so um, I think why don't why don't you tell me what are the best things about American hacker culture? Grassroots. 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 <laughs> I'm gonna say diversity, right? Like the people who go to DEF CON and the people who go to Hope, there are some that will won't go, right? Because they're just too different, right? I think that in this overlap of soul culture and stuff, we get a lot of independent people doing independent projects, and these get to be really different, and we all learn from each other in that way. <laughs> okay, okay. We get a better sense of humor. They have better beer. This is important. Yeah, okay. We argue on that one too. Okay. <laughs> I don't think we have to. <laughs> Anything else? What's What's good about the American hack hacker subculture? It's youthful. That's changing as we all get a lot older. And that's interesting, and I have to take uh, objection. It depends on where you are. Yes. Absolutely. Um, the scene in New York is completely different demographically from the scene in Colorado. So it depends on where you are. In Colorado, it's completely driven by people who are completely over the hill. And <laughs> uh, <laughs> but they have their own thing, and it's really cool. And the youthful scene in, in New York is youthful. <laughs> what else? What else? talk to different people, there's very little like politeness politics going on. Definitely, yeah. definitely. People are real raw with each other. And I think that, well. It's going to say a little bit more diplomatically okay. than that. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I think it's a good thing. I think, uh, you know, this, this real fresh honesty is the kind of, one of the things that we represent, right? So that's a good thing. And I'm, I'm going to go ahead and say that um, we're tougher. <laughs> because uh, we have to face so much stuff that we just have to have the balls to go in and do it. So I think that that's one thing that we really have on our side. What about you? What about us? 
I think the main strength of the CCC is, as stressed so much today, the public image, allowing us so much. Giving a bit of problem with uh, people coming into the scene, but uh, just writing an uh, email to the responsible person in the German government to invite him to show up the, the 20C2C3 or twin, um, talk about um, internet and that stuff, well, you can be quite sure that he will be there. You get buildings like, example, in France, the National Library of France, which, uh, well, the France are, um, and uh, I think as the same proud country as the United States are, and it wasn't a really big problem to get those things. You can go to somebody, talk to them, you won't have any big problem with that. Yes. The next really big difference is the infrastructure. Strength. 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 The infrastructure and the space. We have really many places to meet, which are usually rented places. So you can stay there after 24 o'clock, like 6 o'clock in the morning, drink beer, smoke. Uh, you really can't beer. imagine how this changes everything. I mean, when I went to Berlin, uh, you can go to CCCB at any time of the day or night, and there are going to be people there, and they'll speak English with you, and you're going to be drinking Club Mata and getting really, you know, buzzy on the caffeine, and, and also drinking beer and watching movies and talking about political whatever. I mean, <laughs> it's really sad, but I heard about New Orleans and the, the disaster from the Germans before I heard it here, because, like, they're just in tune with this stuff. So there's this huge amount of discussion all the time. And like sometimes they're just chilling out, and sometimes they're hacking bikes. Like, it's cool stuff. It really changes the dynamic of the, the um, area. If anybody's interested, <laughs> yep. If you look at all the big name successful uh, hacking groups out there that are, exist or don't exist anymore, law, ghetto hackers, uh, CDC, um, Pasty Pastry. People at San Diego have space. If you have Walnut space, Factory. You will. Something good will happen. Yes. Uh, uh, actually, there's a talk about a uh, space failing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, if you have a space that you don't live in and you can't afford, good things happen. Yeah. Let's talk about that. Yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> How important good. a space can you easily see when a new group of the CCC founds itself and gets a space? It just explodes what's happening there. It's You have the people sitting there around for... Well, usually you have at least on um, three to four days on the smaller one, Berlin at the biggest one, it's a different example, it's nearly 24-7, but on the smaller ones where you have spaces, you have three to four days where they open for about six to eight hours. And if that happening, and then the people are joining there and meeting there, talking to each other, uh, usually all the things come up besides discussion. Yes. So, I think we can... Money? Hmm. We're fine. Um, we don't really have one strength is we don't really have so much competition between the groups. There is no competition between the. I don't know what competition groups. is really the right word. Maybe grudges is the right word. Drama. <laughs> drama. Drama. No, they have drama. They have lots of drama. They have maybe more drama than us. But the people in the THC are going to come to the Congress, right? People in Fino Elite are going to put on a thousand, thirteen hundred euro light work display, like after the Congress, because they get along. It's no big deal, right? Like, <coughs> even though they're different, even though they do different things, it's uh, it's different. So, uh, here you have Emmanuel not going to Hope and Jeff Moss doing everything he can to stop twenty six hundred, and <laughs> basically, in my opinion, so. Um, so th that's just that's another strength of, of them. So that's that's basically it. That's just wrapping up. That's that's our, our conclusions. That's what we think differences between them. <sighs> um, the the story as I heard it is that he went maybe sometime maybe six years ago something like that to DefCon and he was denied press credentials. Who I guess you know if anybody in the scene gets press credentials, it's probably Emmanuel. 
but there's been this feud between them ever since, as far as I know. So real quick, uh, before the next speaker, I want to make a couple announcements. If you guys have radios, FRS radios, we're on channel four. That's going to be a channel your mom. Um, <laughs> we're having a party tonight in 522. So come on by. Yeah. Um, 10. Will it be good German beer? Um, actually, we have to give away these raffle tickets real fast. Um, first person who names the beer we've been drinking. Like <laughs> Come and get it. What else? Um, <laughs> anybody who um, has been to Germany or Europe and hung out the hacker scene there? Ever. What other band plays before here? What? Oh, with a song when y'all came in. You already have one. It's sort of like Oh, craft work. Okay, two more. What are questions? Do um, you remember the room where the party is tonight? Well, well, oh, 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 the other, the other announcement is, uh, is uh, Hope. Uh, I'm one of the organizers, and uh, despite what you might think, it's going to be a really, really good time. Um, it, no, I'm not serious. <laughs> like, uh, we, we do have a lot of cool people and a lot of cool projects working on it. So, and we're trying to get people from their individual um, 2600 or whatever your group is, wherever, to come and represent, bring your stuff, and uh, sell it or share it or whatever you're doing. So you can write me, b9punk at b9punk.org. Or you can write, um, I think, info at 2600.com. Or there's hope.net is the hope website. There's email addresses there, too. So we well, for volunteers and people to come. So who's coming to hope? Who's coming to hope who's not in New York? Come on up. Come on up. Come on up. Come on up. Get your raffle ticket. OK, as she has an announcement, I'll also announce some things. We have also some cons. I'd like to invite you. We have in September the Mediterranean Market Cow Stage, which is more a smaller thing. But as American, it might be most interesting for you to yes. show up on the biggest conference. Like we'll see you in New York this summer. Far, uh, I'm, GCC conference, I remember your face. GCC if conference. you don't come, I'm going to find you. And, um, you have <coughs> probably heard uh, for the Talk of Hope that uh, they have more German wiki than we have because the Congress of the CCC <laughs> is completely oh, yeah. organized in English. As we have the language problem in, in Europe all over, we need to... We're really working on having this German-American bridge because I think there's a lot we can learn from each other. So um, we're going to have a lot of them come to Hope and we want as many people as possible to go to the German cons, particularly the Congress in Berlin in December, right after Christmas. It's a really good time. So. And for example, we are trying to build up something like Blinking Lights at the Hope uh, to help you to improve your public. <laughs> Sorry.